connecting to the cloud. Okay, I think we've connected. Here we go. We we're, we're live. We're something. All right. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jennifer, and I am DRSS treasurer and vice president. And good afternoon. We'd like to welcome you to our latest session of DRSF discussion. Um, you might have caught a video that we did a week or so ago where President Pam and I had a discussion in regards to uh, DRSS fostering program. We were thrilled at the response that we had and so we decided to take it one step farther and we have a discussion set up with Frank and Karen from Sully's Dog House, one of our long-term fosters. So we welcome them to our discussion today. Thanks guys for joining us. Hi. Hello. Hi. Okay, so first of all, Karen, who is that adorable thing that is in your arms? This is Perla, who was a foster, but we we kept her, who is just like a big old baby and will only be carried over my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just so that everybody else knows, when Perla came to us from Puerto Rico, she had a horrific heart condition, um, and Dr. Schroeder at Leader, it's a PDA, fixed her little heart up and she, you can still see where she's shaved there. Um, without the surgery, she would have died. Uh, DRSF community rallied and, and helped support that surgery. And she is here in, uh, in the best home she could have ever gotten right there under, under mama's chin there. <laughs> so the first question that I wanna ask you is what, you, what got you as a family interested in fostering? I, I think it started out as a, a a class project, so to speak, with the kids, and it gave uh, more responsibility for our two daughters at the time. Okay. And then after that, it just morphed where it was Karen and I being more the caretakers, and we continued. But as we were the, the rescue we were with at the time, it was I don't play well with others. I guess you could say it was too political. So we we after about six seven months, we dropped out. We started interviewing interviewing at the rescues and I think out of the blue one day I emailed Pam hey I got this many dogs is that going to be a problem I get an email probably 30 seconds to a minute later not a problem I have that many dogs also <laughs> and that, that's that's where it all started we I mean after the kids it was just Kieran and I most of the time with our daughter's help I mean we've been since 2015 we're on Dog 90, 92. That was my next question was, have you kept track? Oh, yeah. My, my, I, it's hard <laughs> to see, but this is Kimberly. Kimberly started this in 2015. Oh. This is every Kimmy, dog. Yay! And everything that's, everything that's highlighted are dogs that we yeah. failed on. This is the oh, first that would be failure. Number, number one. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Lexi, and then we have Perla. So if it's just, I get nervous at the top of the list. That's pretty impressive, though, that after 90, how many 92 dogs, only three stayed. 93 we have in the house right yep. now is our 93rd. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And he leaves tomorrow, correct? He leaves, he leaves tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you feel like you give more or get more from fostering? I, don't know. I, I think, think it goes both. both ways. Yeah, I think I'm, both. I mean, we enjoy so much giving them the love that they need. Uh, we love it when we meet the adoptive parents and, you know, they're so excited as soon as they see the dog, they're automatically in love with them. And it just makes your heart feel good that, you know, knowing that they're going to a safe and a loving home. Yeah. Also, what's good, I mean, it's, the, the, both aspects is you, you have a dog that comes into your house, you have no expectations, they have no expectations of what's happening. Happening. But it's it's a growth thing, and sometimes we learn something that we don't know, and then dogs learn something that, I mean, I've had dogs in here that didn't know how to sit, and they learned how to sit. But it's 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 a it's a growth thing both ways. Right, right, right. Um, now, one of the one of the things so many people say to us is, how can you let them go? Like, how how can you do that? How do you? have these dogs and love them because we know that you love them like they are your own and then how do you let them go it's very hard at times there's some that you know you're like okay good they're going and other ones you're like oh really we have an adopter oh okay you know but then when you see them together and see how happy they all are it really it makes you smile yeah 
that and then the, when you see a, a message on Facebook for the Pambulance or you and Jen at, at Miami International Airport at midnight picking up more dogs, it's there's another need. So this dog's going this dog is going to a home and you you know you're gonna have another one coming in the house. So it's mm -hmm. the need is always there for a temporary home, however long it is. One of the things that I appreciate most about your household is how willing you are to pretty much trust my judgment and, and at, you know, to take, I think that there's been what one dog that you asked me to move that was not a good fit, but yeah. you'll take, you take old, you take young, you take, you've taken sick, you've taken, I mean, you, you guys just are, okay, send them, okay, send them. And you'll take that when we're overloaded, there've been times when you've had three of ours, um, you know, and we, we just, you know, I just can't, I just can't tell you how much we appreciate what you do for us. Um, Jen, you want to ask the next question? Uh, yeah, you know, one of the one of the things that I've learned from fostering is it has, you know, allowed me to be, you know, a better a better parent for some of my own dogs. Would you guys say that, you know, have have you learned anything from fostering or you know working with DRSF or any of the resources that we have that has kind of been able to empower you for some of your own dogs? I'm not sure. I mean, in our, 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 we, with the dogs we have, I mean, I got a greyhound, a blue tick coonhound. We, we have a variety of dogs in our house. And it's, it's, they all have their personalities and they all just bounce off each other. Do they all get along at times? No, but it, it's fine. When a new, new dog comes in the house, they're always curious. They always want to know what is going on. But like Pam said, almost one dog out of 93 that we had an issue with. Yep. I mean, if Pam says, I think this is a good dog for your house, it's a good dog for your house. And so far I've had no complaints whatsoever. Good. Um, what has been the biggest challenge for you? The dogs that are not potty trained. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. They are no fun, are they? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it has its aspects. Yes, it's frustrating. Yes, it's time consuming, but you just got to show patience. And I mean, you just, a lot of these dogs are off the street. But once yeah. they learn, they're, they're good. I mean, right. we, have, we have one that we know we can't let off a leash alone in the yard. And so now we have to walk them every morning every afternoon in the evening before bed and that's a big change for us because we right fenced in yard and we normally just let them go in and out whenever yeah. they want Can't that's do the beauty right of a big yard yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 okay is there anything that you would add to this conversation um that might help somebody that's you know considering it but but isn't you know just isn't sure yet communicate i mean if you want to hit me up on our Facebook page, I, I will be blunt with you of what you could expect and whatnot. I have, I won't hide anything. I won't sugarcoat anything. I mean, you just got to go in with an open mind and an open heart. Because, like I said, you, you, you have no expectations of what the dog is that you're receiving. They have none. And the other thing, if you have your own dogs, there's a third aspect of an expectation. You don't know what's going to happen until it happens. So you just got to walk through, be observant. I, I, I call it the, the first three days of a new dog, the three days of suck. Plain and simple, <laughs> because there's going to be issues. I mean, sometimes I've had things that happen a week later, but there's times we have a dog. I mean, Charlie came into our house, the recent dog. I mean, within the next day, he, he acted like he lived here for years. He was in the routine. He was, he was all good. Yeah. And others that it was, we're banging heads against. It's like, come on, no, no, over here. Right. But it's, 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 you just got to have an open heart and open mind. Right. One of the things that, that I discussed at length in the last video that just kind of talked about the foster process was people who go into it with the expectation of the dog that they're getting being a trial for a dog that they want to adopt. Um, and have you ever looked at any of these dogs like that or have the three that you've adopted just been a, oh my gosh, I can't let this one go. Yeah. We, we've, 
We have had that happen uh, three times, oh but yep. we don't, a dog that's like, like I said, you ship as a dog. I, whatever dog comes in, comes in. I have no, whatever you send me, send me. But you just can't say you're going to pick this dog. It's, it's, um, right. You got to trust the process. Yeah. Trust right. the process. I mean, it's, just because you think this, oh, this is the perfect looking dog, so and so, oh, it's got this markings, it's got that, doesn't mean his personality is going to fit with yours. So, and you got to be able to, with an open heart, take that dog in your house and be able to release it to his next adopter. I mean, you can't go and say, oh, I want to foster that dog because that's the dog I want. It doesn't happen that way because, like I said, there's been dogs here. You take a deep breath after they leave. <laughs> okay, Jen, is there anything you want to add? Um, and my last question would be, what piece of advice would you guys have for somebody that's maybe watched our last video, watched this one, and is like, geez, you know, I, I'm, I'm on the fence. I'd love to give it a shot. And they just haven't been able to make that final plunge. What piece of advice would you share to, to help them off the bench and fill out that foster application? Take the plunge. Take the plunge. <laughs> Once you do your first one, it gets a little easier. You know, it's and just do it. You, you, and you need to communicate with with Pam or whoever your 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 go to person is, because they've seen it or heard it all of, of what happens with the dog. There's been times where I had a dog from the vet, I picked it up, and two hours later, I'm calling Pam in a panic, and she's like, "Relax, I'll call you back in a few minutes." She calls me back in a few minutes, and she goes, "Okay, this is what happened. You're okay. Just relax." And listen to what they tell you. They've been doing it for years. This is not their first rodeo. So, Excellent. do the home study, do the home visit that they come to when you do sign your foster paperwork. They check your house, they look at your yard, make sure everything's safe, and then just communicate. That's all you gotta do. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Oh, we really one, appreciate one last it. Book. If somebody wanted to find you on Facebook, where do they find you? We're at Sully's Doghouse on Facebook. S-U-L-L-Y apostrophe S, Doghouse. Two words. Excellent. And, and you're more than free to, to, to send a comment, question, or anything like that via that, via that Facebook page. Okay. We appreciate your support. Awesome, guys. Thank okay. you so much. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.